I'm thoroughly enjoying being in the forest these days. There is so much to explore, to observe and to photograph. More and more fungi are popping up as we inch towards autumn and I simply cannot ignore them. So I was going to refrain from doing any more fungi and mushroom photography until autumn was in full swing, but I can't deny that it's been inspiring me to get out, it's been motivating me to do photography and I've been really enjoying it while learning a lot about the forest floor, so uh, screw it, we're just going to go with it. A quick rundown of the gear that you might see in today's video popping up over and over again. We are using the Nikon D750 with the three-legged thing LE universal bracket. Laura reached out and asked if I wanted to test out their 100mm f2.8 2 times ultra macro APO lens and I said yes, absolutely, so uh, we will be using that in today's video. We've got the usual Vanguard tripod options, a travel tripod with a reversible column and a slightly larger tripod with a multi-angle column. And we've got a LED light just in case the natural light is not enough underneath the trees today. My experience with macro photography has been quite limited. I'd say that I have done more macro photography over the past year or this year than I've ever done in my life. <laughs> I tend to look at the bigger picture of nature and of a landscape first, but I've been consciously making the effort to notice those smaller scenes, those intimate subjects and stories. And actually it has felt like the right thing to do, the right move to make in terms of my photography. It's a completely different world and a completely different take on nature and it's utterly fascinating. It's helping me to appreciate the smaller things and when you really look at something like the forest floor, it is teeming with life and stories no matter how big or tiny they are. I've used this lens a few times off camera now and I'm really really excited to get stuck in with it and see how I get on with it. It is a manual lens, it is manual focus only and the aperture is also controlled via the lens itself rather than in camera and I believe it's the Canon EF version where you can control your aperture in the camera. This lens can focus from infinity to two times magnification, which essentially means that you could go and photograph a large mushroom, for example, and then switch to photographing a tiny, tiny spider without having to change your lens or use extension tubes. That makes this lens pretty versatile. Now I'm no insect photographer, but the ability to get so close to minuscule subjects in the forest and capture so much detail without having to crop is pretty cool. I really like these translucent caps on these mushrooms because if you use an LED light, 
and bounce some warm tones, even cool tones on the cap. It can create orangey, even pinky and purple colours, which I think looks very magical and ethereal. The one thing that I'm learning to do in my fungi photography is gardening. And usually with my landscape photography, I don't touch the scene. I don't add things. I don't take things away. I photograph it as I see it. But with this type of macro photography, you do need to garden around your subject, behind it and in between the subject and the lens. And this just removes any distracting elements. It simplifies the scene. And it's amazing how the tiniest blade of grass in front of your lens can really draw your attention and your eye in an image. Now in this image my eye is being drawn to and distracted by these trees in the background and I can hardly go and just remove those trees, <laughs> it's not as simple as that. So I'm trying to compose in a way that they are not so distracting or not present at all. At the moment I do have one creeping in on the right so I might have to crop that in post-processing and I've experimented getting closer to it to try and eliminate it but I do want to give this mushroom a little bit of space I want to give it a tiny bit of breathing room I don't want to get super super close up to it but I do like the shape of the cap it reminds me of a witch's hat <laughs> I've taken a quick look at some of the images that I've taken so far with this lens, some from this video and some before I started filming this video, and I'm quite impressed as to how sharp this lens is. If you can nail your focusing, <laughs> the first two images in this video, I struggled slightly with my focus because those mushrooms were so unbelievably tiny and I was working so close up to them that any time I just shifted my focus, I was just shaking the camera and the lens. So I can see where things like vibration reduction, image stabilization, equipment like focusing rails could be really beneficial to certain types of macro photography. When trying to make those precise focus adjustments, I have noticed that the focus ring on this lens is slightly stiff or I mean smooth but stiffer than my Sigma macro lens which is quite loosey-goosey and that's not a bad thing it's just something that I've noticed I suppose when you're used to one bit of gear and then you go test something new out you are going to notice small differences I have been focus stacking all of the images in this video so far to capture as much detail as possible in the cap and in the gills of these mushrooms and although it is a little time consuming to do it, I actually really enjoy the process because I get to study and explore these mushrooms up close bit by bit. Really look, taking a look at the textures and the shapes, the colours, bits that are broken off. And I find it really fascinating and almost meditative to do it. Although I have to say, it's not so great on the back, <laughs> these low angles. <laughs> One of the features of this lens is the APO designation, which means that it should show no chromatic aberration in the images. And it would have been interesting to use the 850 and those 45 megapixels to really put that through its paces, but I am enjoying using the 750 today. And I know that sometimes you guys do miss it. I don't know why I'm setting this up handheld. <laughs> I'm a terrible handheld photographer, <laughs> tripod. <laughs> I did want to find one more shot to end this video on 
and I've been walking around for a while and I'm not really finding anything different. In fact, I'm pretty much just finding these mushrooms in ones and twos and I wish that I would come across clusters of them. I think that would be really fun to photograph. I do have a nice purple one here and purple is my favourite colour so I was drawn to that <laughs> probably for that specific reason and no other reason. But it's in all of this grass and I've already sort of cleared a bit of it out in between the mushroom and the lens but still this shot is really, really messy and I think all this grass is really distracting. So I don't really want to go pulling all of this grass up. That's a lot of grass to pull up and I just don't think that I should do that. So we're going to leave this and uh, probably wrap up this video, which is a good idea as we've got some nasty weather rolling in and this lens is not weather sealed. I don't know if any of you have noticed throughout this video, but this lens has a UV filter on the end. It does come with the lens and it is recommended that you keep it on. So when you turn the focus ring on this lens, the length of the lens does not change. Instead, the inner tube moves up and down the barrel. And so if you took this off, it would be so, so easy for little particles of pollen and dust or rain to get down there and your elements the lens elements are slightly exposed, so it's probably not the best idea to get this lens in sort of <laughs> pretty rough and rugged situations or a uh, heavy rain. <laughs> I really enjoyed using this lens today and if you don't need autofocus or image stabilization then this is a very fun macro lens to use. I'm really intrigued by the rest of Lauer's lenses because I believe they do a 15mm wide angle macro lens which could be really really interesting so maybe we will um, see if we can get hold of one and try one out this autumn otherwise Thank you so much for watching this video and uh, I'll see you next time.